Hello kitties! Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Kira. I'm better known as Afro Kitty on social media. And for those of you who don't know what I do, I'm an artist that loves to talk about dolls, cartoons, TV shows, movies, and the occasional anime. And in today's video, I will be talking about last week's Rainbow High episode from season 3 called Right to Rock. Now, there's two topics to discuss from this episode, which is Harley Limestone songwriting workshop and a look on all the bands that are competing for the semi-final round. So let's get into the video. In the first section of the episode, we focus on a group of girls consisting of Delilah, Poppy, Harper, Natasha, and Daria Rose as they each attend Harley's class of songwriting. Now, everything's good until Natasha reveals who, you know, she's been previously seen auditioning and passing to the semifinals. It's been revealed that she has yet to finish her song, which I think it's a bit surprising because in that specific episode, which is episode seven, I feel like her song out of the rest that we've seen in that, in that episode, as well as Harper's, okay, Harper's song was good too, but Natasha was also good. And I felt like it was more polished and I never pointed it out in that episode that she was the only one that auditioned outside of the stage and in a completely different area, which I just find, I just find it completely like suspicious. I mean, we know that shadow high is plotting something, but we don't, we still have yet to know what it is. And knowing Natasha, she knows some of the plans. So it's kind of like, girl, what you doing? What you hiding? And basically all of the girls for the exception of Harper, they used the class to help Natasha finish her lyrics to her song. And in this case, I want to praise Harper for leaving the class and not standing for the bullshit that it is to help another contestant, you know, with their song that should have been finished by now. And and I don't even care if the workshop is for free. I just find it very enraging, especially for Harper, since, again, she's competing against her. I don't know. I wouldn't help her at all. And I like the fact that when she le when she left, she literally was like, okay, good luck helping her and not getting credit for helping her. Bye. And I'm like, props to you, girl, because I would have done the same. Another thing I wanted to point out from this section of the episode is that we get to finally have more Delilah screen time. I actually love Delilah. I loved her doll. I don't know. I don't remember if they came to to Puerto Rico to my Walmart. Yeah, they did. I, I had a picture. They did. And at that time, I didn't have the money because here it's very, very uh, expensive. I'm pretty sure in Walmart or in Amazon, you can get them by, you know, like $26, $27. But um, where I live, it's about 40, almost $46 to purchase some of these dolls. It's very expensive. I don't even understand why. Anyways. I'm very happy to see Delilah. I think she's so pretty. I think she's so cute. I love her voice. It's very soft and like soft spoken. She's very soft spoken and it has a very heavy accent. And a good chunk of this episode, they do focus on her a little bit and her talent for song being a songwriter. And I'm actually very excited to see more from her. Now let's focus on Natasha again. And I wanted to um just add something into it that even by the end of this episode where she does get the inspiration and she actually gets to finish the song it the song in itself feels more like a commercial for her brand and her perfume rather than anything else and even though yes she does she still does the thing the same thing in in initially i just feel like girl you didn't do anything so like so big uh the the lyrics to her song are very simple very basic and i'm not sure if she's even going to win this next round but who knows who knows also like i don't know the the, the lyrics in itself is very repetitive and it, it feels very similar to how most songs nowadays are especially with the lyrics because the thing is, the lyrics might be trash, but the beat of the music and the beat of the song in itself is what really brings out, really makes the song popular in itself. That's what I've noticed lately, because I, I kind of go more for the rhythm and the beat of the song rather than just the lyrics sometimes. 
I don't know. I really like upbeat music. That's why I, I like really like, you know, music that makes you dance and just have fun. Those are the, that, that's the type of songs and music that I really gravitate towards. So that's why I kind of was very, I, I really liked Natasha's song when I reviewed this episode, uh, I think a few weeks back. But then when you look at it, the song, I mean, the lyrics ain't that good, but that's it. I think that's all I have to say for her. Now let's focus on the second part of this episode where it's honestly, there's a lot of like first time screen appearances. We also, I'm not sure what's her name. I didn't quite get it at the moment, but there's this new character. I assume she's new. She has like a white ensemble with like diamonds and really cute attire i have to say she does look very similar to aisha sterling they look very similar to e towards each other to each other i'm not sure what she's gonna do or who she is i don't remember if i ever got gotten her name in the episode but she looks beautiful either way she still looks pretty so yeah we have her we also have the band that is called those darn dolls which I will be honest, I did confuse them with River's Band. I thought that River's Band was actually called Those Darn Dolls, but in fact, it was it was this duo that we see in this episode and not them. So thank you for clarifying that in a previous episode that I did. Thank you for the comments. And yeah, I mean, these two characters, they look very underwhelming. We know that these characters are background characters. And the only thing that we know about them is that they're the duo from this this band and they're competing in the semifinals. Um, I, I'm still calling them um, Neon Green Boy and Baby Blue Guy because there's no names. They're, their names have yet to be revealed. But the Baby Blue one, he has a speaking role in this episode. And he is intertwined with the K-pop bandmate Tessa Park and they speak to each other and it's cute. But that's me. I like shipping characters even if they have very small interactions with each other because I want to see more couples. Literally, I want to see more couples. The only ones we have, well, the only ones we did have was Amaya and River and then a possible Gabriella and Finn. We don't know what's going to happen with those two, but you know, I and I also really hope that Amaya and River can make up somehow. I think the previous episode, they had a few interactions with each other and River, they kind of left us in a cliffhanger where River was asking her to talk, What was asking Amaya to have a conversation and to just chit chat. And I told y'all, I knew he was going to fuck that shit up. He was going to fumble the bag. He was going to be like, oh no, he was, you know, he was feeling, he was in the moment, spur of the moment kind of thing. But I hope that he does make it up to Amaya for the shit that he pulled to her. Like the shit, the shit he pulled, it was not good. Anyways, back to the conversation of this episode. We also have more screen time for the K-pop idols, the K-pop girlies. I don't remember their names. I think uh, the only one I kind of like remember is Tessa Park. So, yeah, I'm so sorry for that. But they all look fabulous. I think my favorite is Tessa Park. I like that blue color. I like her outfits. They're very cute. Now, I'm not so used to it. Like, I don't know. Like, the, they always have, like, one half up, half, half down kind of style where it, it's either, like, one cut up short and then the other side of the of the jeans is longer. I have seen that style before. I just feel like it's so odd seeing it, like, <laughs> on the 3D model dolls. And I feel bad for them in this episode because they were in a in a, such a rush and they weren't allowed to have a lot of time with their fans and like signing autographs and stuff like that. And I thought that was very nice of them to, you know, take time out, out of their schedule to at least sign autographs. I think that was nice, but not nice for Avery since she was like on the, on the run for them. She was searching for them. She was doing a lot. This episode, she had it very, very rough. And I also want to say thank you uh for the people in the comments who were telling me that i you know i i forgot I, I, not that i forgot but i never realized that i was calling her audrey and not avery in another video that i made about rainbow high so thank you for all the people that pointed it out nonetheless like i mentioned avery was having it rough and not to mention she was also dealing with the manager coco and let me tell you something we see coco in action in this episode she was so you know she was asking for a lot of the things she was wanting a lot of accommodations for the girls for the for the girls that she's managing at the point 
And I was like, girl, I love you. I love that you're doing a good job. But at the same time, poor Avery is having it. And I'm sick. I want her to have a break. And you're not making things better. You're like, you know, you're stressing her out more. And I want to say, I really want to say she's doing a great job. And I also have to consider that literally they're in high school. They're in high school. They're high schoolers. They're taking this shit too seriously. But, you know, if they're if they're if she's getting paid, mm, keep doing you, honey. Keep doing you. She's doing everything. I'm like, if you're getting paid, I wouldn't mind it either. And we also get to see the disco girls, like all of them, because we did see Aisha. And now we get to see I think her name is Meline or Maylene. Meline. Oh, Meline. Sorry. Yeah. Meline. I think that sounds much better. So, yeah. We have Meline, who she's like the gold color character. And then we have Sabrina, who's the rose. I think she's rose gold. I love me Sabrina. Sabrina's beautiful. I love her doll. I love her color schemes. Very, very pretty. Um, I'm, not, I'm not a fan of Meline's, like, Meline's outfit. I mean... For those who have who have seen most of my videos, I've I've commented a lot of the times whenever I see outfits that are print. I hate print. I hate print. I hate print. I hate it. I hate cheetah print, zebra print, print. I don't like print. It's just no. It it, it kind of it always gives me cougar vibes or a pimp, you know, especially with the way um her coat is. It's very long. It does give me it does remind me of like a 90s pimp look. I'm not sure if they used to if that's the I'm not sure if it's the 90s. It probably is. I'm I'm gonna have to fact check it. You guys, y'all guys can fact check me if I'm right or wrong. But I'm not a fan of the outfit. I do like her hair. It's giving me Beyonce. Like her whole aesthetic, it's giving me Beyonce though. It's really beautiful. I think she still looks beautiful. I just don't like the coat with the print. I don't like that. And let me tell you something. She's a diva. She's a complete diva. I was like, girl, wow. And yeah, we did. We also like, like I mentioned, we also got. Sabrina and we did get a little bit more of a screen time for her and I love her she's beautiful and she wanted to attend the songwriting workshop but unfortunately she was too late because of you know scheduling and all that stuff however she did come across a notebook filled with songs that were and the notebook was from Delilah and I'm not sure about you but be, between their interactions I can tell that there might be a collaboration coming soon between them because, you know, it's just like a dream come true. You know, Delilah's not good at singing, but she's a good songwriter. And Sabrina's not good at writing, but she's good at singing. So I hope that they do make a collaboration soon. And who knows? We might even get a solo act from Sabrina. I love it. I love it. And I never mentioned that the girls remind me of like dream girls. It's giving me dream girls. They they have that look and aesthetic. And it also does remind me of Destiny's Child. But I think it's because they're a trio. And the middle one looks like Beyonce. Anyways, um, I'm going I'm to add some honorable mentions in this episode. And it's between the interactions of the Shadow High students and the Rainbow High students. Now, with the Shadow High students, I'm talking more on Ainsley and then... Rainbow High students, I think it's the teal girl. I honestly forgot her name right at, I'm so sorry, but she's beautiful. I really like her. And she was styling the new character's outfit and stuff. And the names, you know, she, she was throwing it back. She was throwing back comments because they were both, you know, they were shading each other. And I was like, damn, y'all have to take this. Y'all take this thing too seriously. Like, y'all really here hating each other instead of, like, integrating and just joining and creating something together i would have loved to seen that but i'm not sure maybe they would go that route in later episodes but i really hope that they do i think they're both you know both both um schools are very very talented and i think they could even become even a a, a way bigger thing if they just join but of course you know that's not how it is i'm always like with the kumbaya shit but i just i just wish they would just not be so hateful towards each other and I know that Ainsley now, uh, there's going to be a lot of hate to Ainsley, especially with the Rainbow High students, because of her leaving. And, you know, it was a big-ass deal. Ugh. I mean, of course. But, yeah. I don't know. I feel like they should tone that shit down a bit. 
because it's just it's just a life or death kind of situation here. And I don't know. I don't know. I wish they would like love each other, but that's again, that's just the peace peace and love kind of girl me, but no. <laughs> no. And I think that's all I have to say for this episode. Let me know what are your thoughts on this episode, this particular episode. Which band is your favorite and who are you rooting for? Did you like Natasha's song? And what do you think of Coco Vanderbilt's managing skills? So let me know all your thoughts in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. And make sure to click on the notification bell to get notified of new videos. And I will see you in the next one. Bye!